All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so today we're going to be having uh, quite a lot of um, conversations on this very, very important, important topic uh, that's um, really, really speaking to issues on a very, very international level, very, very international level. So I'm pleased to welcome you to this particular webinar. My name is Itoa Igodalo, and I'm by God's grace, the president of the African Leadership Group and uh, the moderator of the uh, uh, Nigerian Leadership Series. Today, we are partnering with the United Nations Information Center, and this webinar is coordinated by the Economy, Environment, and Energy economy environment and energy eee committee of the alg uh, for those who are joining us for the first time the alg is a dynamic unique and unique organization with a strong vision and sense of purpose that fosters accountability and promotes justice political equity productive collaboration integrity, truthfulness, excellence, and respect for all towards the right leadership for societal transformation and nation building. Our group, the Economic, Environment, and Energy Group, the Economy, Environment, and Energy Group is one of the committees that has been set up to address and to demand effective leadership in the public and private organizations that are directly linked to these sectors, that is the economy, the environment, and energy, with the objectives of improving and sustaining growth and development towards achieving SDG, the SDG goals by 2030. The committee aims to support government and stakeholders in building alignment of the Nigerian economy energy and environment policies and programs at federal, state, and local levels to align with the SDGs to 2030 for increased performance and impact. As part of the work, as part of its work, the ALGEE committee has critically examined both the 2020 report and also the 23 SDG report and similar space on country rankings. Um, the country rankings for the for 2023 <laughs> ranks our country Nigeria 146 over 166. We don't know if this is an improvement or <laughs> if a, 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 a regression from 139 over 163 in 2022 looks like it's a definite regression. And this is our F, F, uh, SDG scores. There are various barriers to success of the SDG, lack of policy, lack of effective linkages. But lest I pick the brain of our speaker, let me wait for him to let us have his own opinion as to why our country, Nigeria, is ranked 146 out of 166. Very, very interesting in a country where just last week, I don't know what kind of rebasing we did, suddenly Nigeria has only 4.1% unemployment rate, uh, which is fantastically up from almost an 80% unemployment rate just a few weeks ago. Um, and this is the kind of uh, economics that we're doing in Nigeria, rebasing the economy and coming up with these kinds of very interesting statistics. Um, so we've looked at all these SDG matters, and we may give a little brief of our own report, uh, maybe by the end of the session, if our speaker has not covered it, and just for the information of our people. We're hoping that the outcomes of this forum will help our leaders and all stakeholders to reflect on their current actions and implications for Nigeria's sustainable development 
and change how they think, how they plan, and how they act, bearing in mind the five underpinning values of the SDGs, which are a people thriving society, prosperity, a prosperous economy, and healthy, a planet healthy ecosystem, and environments that bring about peace and justice for all. I encourage you to pay rapt attention to all the discussions uh, and contribute so that we can achieve these outcomes. Uh, the committee members of the EEE committee include Ibrahim Pam, Jumoke Akintelo, Tayo Fagwenro, Emmanuel Estien, Bamishe Olanri Waju, Afolabi Ajidaun, Ayodeji Oinloye, Bukola Adewakun, Ibijoke Morakio, Benjamin Omeze, and it is coordinated by Eugene Itwa. He has to pay me seriously for the use of that name Itwa, but we'll discuss that at a later date. So I want to thank this committee for really, really doing an awesome job thus far, regularly meeting and coming up with the idea of this uh, uh, forum and this webinar uh, today. I also want to thank our partners, the United Nations Information Center for agreeing to partner with us uh, uh, this day. I'm going to hand over to Dr. Itwa, who is going to be my co-host today. Uh, he has been our committee coordinator and chairman and is the CEO of Natural Eco Capital, a sustainability consulting firm. So he's more than ably qualified to be our chair on this particular committee. He's, the, he's an advisory board member of UNDP's African Green Business and financing is an initiative under the UNDP Africa Sustainable Finance Hub, South Africa, and so on and so forth. He's also a board member of Nigerian Network of NGOs and a board member of the Center for Climate Change and SDGs, Ibinodian University, Nigeria. Please welcome with me, Dr. Eugene Itwa to continue with the moderation. Thank you very much. President, thank you very much for that uh, eloquent uh, introduction and presentation and for providing us this beautiful background to all that we shall be doing today. Thank you very much. And uh, we want to welcome everyone once again to this uh, event. Just to let you know that to mark the halfway point to the deadline for achieving the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, the President of the General Assembly is convening the 2023 SDG Summit. The SDG Summit, which will take place on 18 and 19 September 2023 in New York, will mark the beginning of a new phase of accelerated progress towards sustainable development goals with high level political guidance on transformative and accelerated actions leading up to 2030. The Secretary General of UN has urged world leaders to come together at the 2023 SDG Summit to deliver what can be described as a rescue plan for people and planet. The summit is therefore expected to be the centerpiece of the high level week of the General Assembly. It will respond to the impact of multiple and interlocking crises facing the world and is expected to reignite hope, optimism, and enthusiasm for the 2030 agenda. This is against the background, we must realize this, of the grim reality that at the midpoint of the 2030 agenda, the SDGs 
are far off track. At the global level, <laughs> averaging across countries, not a single SDG is currently projected to be met by 2030. With the poorest countries struggling the most, in Sub-Saharan Africa, regional average is seen to be about 53% of, although Nigeria has about 54.3. Based on the latest ranking, we have a report, Sustainable Development Report 2030, implementing the SDG stimulus. That is what was presented. The SDG summits will provide an opportunity as emphasis, as a reality check. So in preparation for the summit, we consider it relevant for us as a nation to build a consensus on the progress made. This is especially so as stakeholders generally agree, unlike what the president just said, that Nigeria cannot meet the SDGs by 2030. What can Nigeria spotlight as the score of performance thereafter? What are the game changers and pro problem solving approaches as part of the preparatory process? How can the needed resources be mobilized for a renewed social contract? These questions, our distinguished audience, are what our speakers we'll be speaking to. We have eminent and distinguished personalities to provide insights into all these through their presentations and statements. We encourage all participants to remain muted, please. Kindly insert your comment or questions in the chat box. Our colleagues will harvest those comment questions and then we will put them across to the panelists or, or speakers. And indeed for us to set the ball rolling, we would look at, like to look at the key topic today, advancing and accelerating performance of Nigeria's SDGs, Agenda 2030, key issues and solutions. Our presenter, or he that will be talking to us is an eminent scholar. He was at a time the vice chancellor, University of Benin. At present, he is the vice chancellor of Benin University. This is an amiable professor. Kindly allow me to call out his name, Professor Lawrence Izemoye. He will be speaking to us on advancing and accelerating performance of Nigeria SDG Agenda 2030, key issues and solutions as the keynote. Professor. Thank you very much, Eugene. Uh, I would like to set the record straight. I was a deputy vice chancellor for two terms under two different administrations at the University of Bini, and currently the vice chancellor at Bidido University. I was also the director of uh, the Energy Center under the Energy Commission of Nigeria, and still currently one of the Nigerian representatives at the World Energy Council. On this note, I would like to begin by, can I share my screen, please? Yes, you can. You are a co-host. Okay. Yeah. One minute. We can, can see, see my screen now. Yes, we can see. So presentation mode, then that will be excellent. Yes, I'm planning. Yeah. It's okay now. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine, but not yet in the presentation mode. 
of Are you seeing that? Is it on the mode now? Beautiful. Fantastic. So, I'm not sure we can hear you. I would like for. Let me begin by thanking the President of Africa. We cannot hear you, sir. Dr. Ito, I think we lost uh, we lost him. He's he's offline. Yes, I can see that. Okay. So let's just give some two minutes, please. Okay. And then maybe you want to welcome um Ms. Yongimi, she's in, and Dr. Atoki, they are in as well. Yes, we had welcomed Dr. Atoki earlier. And uh, yeah, we, we call them at, at the appropriate time. Let's just see if uh, Prof. Mary joined. I'm really sorry for that break. We can see this slide. Good, we can see this. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sorry for that break. As I was saying, I, I, I appreciate the, the invite to be part of this webinar. And more importantly, I also want to acknowledge the fact that I was actually invited by a very close associate, Dr. E.G.D. Tuan, that I've worked closely on environmental issues for the last 25 years. Let me also commend the, the team, the EEE group of the African Leadership Group that has put this webinar together. I have indeed honor to speak at this very important webinar because I've really looked at the list of participants and the speakers. They are all erudite and fully knowledgeable. So it's a singular honor for me and a cherished one to be speaking at the advancing and accelerating performance of Nigeria ADC agenda 2030 that will be reflecting on the key issues and solutions. The key words in the topic are very instructive, namely advancing, accelerating, performance, SDG, issues and solutions. And I believe that addressing this, the, the demands of these keywords will certainly provide a strategic platform for upscaling the existing performance index through structured mechanisms to infuse speed in the delivery and deployment of institutional and relevant stakeholders' engagement. I also believe that this webinar will help to further identify the existing challenges and even the pseudo challenges that have always been a mirage to the attainment of the goals. This webinar from the objective intends to provide pro proactive, pragmatic, and actionable intention interventions. And they must be they appear to be key in this conversation. Attainment of the sustainable development goals simply means making the world a better place for the people and planet. There's no doubt about that. I would like to look at the background and historical fact checks. Actually, this presentation, I started with a preamble. 
I will look at the background, historical fact check. We'll look at how far Nigeria has fared, the copious challenges, possible solutions, and the intervention of the academia. In the 70th session of the United Nations General Assembly, precisely on the 25th of September, 2015, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the 17th Sustainable Goals were adopted by one of the three member states, including Nigeria. The 17 Sustainable Goals and the related 169 targets were part of the folder. Agenda 2030 was hinged on five pillars. The five Ps, which are really synonymous to change. The people, peace, prosperity, partnership, and the planet. And these are supposed to be the drivers of the sustainable development goals. Advancing and accelerating are prominent words in this webinar. SDGs acceleration action include one, initiatives that are voluntarily undertaken to accelerate the SDG implementation by governments and other non-state actors with the individual It also reflects any action or actions, but certainly not in actions, that build on existing efforts totally related to the achievement of of the 17 SDGs, addressing the interlinked nature of the 2030 agenda, all put together are considered as acceleration action of the SDG. The establishment of the Nigerian Economic Recovery Well, I'd like to apologize uh, for, on, on behalf of uh, Prof. I think he will rejoin. You never can really predict this uh, sometime this network. So let's just wait for him to be Dr. Dr. Eugene, can you send a message to him to go off um, video? Also, his video is it? Yeah. Let me yeah, send him His video is on, so and it, we don't need the video. He might be competing with the required bandwidth for his presentation. He's trying to rejoin, please. Can I continue? No. Yes, please. OK. I was at the point of uh, advancing some interventions from the Nigerian scenario where we are geared towards accelerating the SDGs. And one of such was the establishment of the Nigerian Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017-2020 and the 2020-2025 mid-term plan. I was part of that and the agenda 2050. These are Nigeria's interventions. And more importantly, the voluntary national reviews were also adopted by Nigeria to facilitate the sharing of experiences 
including successes, challenges, and lessons learned with a view to accelerating implementation of the 2030 Agenda. It is pertinent to bring to fore that Nigeria's 2017 PNR focused on institutional interventions, creating an enabling policy environment for the implementation using the ERIC as a fulcrum. In 2020, Nigeria formalist started the proper process of designing and implementing an integrated national finance, financing framework for financing national development priorities and achievements of the sustainable development goals. In 2023, the VNR focused on the critical issues of poverty, SDG1, health and well being, education and gender equality and partnership. These were selected priorities identified by the Economic Recovery Group Plan. This means that Nigeria's commitment to an inclusive and evidence-based VNR process is a desiderant to. Development of an SDG baseline performance in indicator database and the domestication of integrated SDG tool for medium and long-term development planning became a yardstick for improving the indices. Today, the integrated sustainable development goals model, specifically for Nigeria, is a policy simulation tool used in aligning our national developments and the programs within the context of the SDG. I only need to mention at this point too that institutionalization of the social protection for accelerated sustainable development goals implementation in Nigeria is part of the key interventions. In 2020, four UN agencies came together and all in the need to enhance social protection at the federal and state levels in Nigeria. These historical facts and more not contained in this presentation leads me to the next slide, which is a critical question. How has Nigeria fared within the contents of attaining the 17 goals, particularly with reference to Agenda 2030? The Sustainable Development Reports of 2023 marks the 8th edition of the Annual Assessment for UN Member States towards the actualization of the Sustainable Development Goals. Of course, this discusses urgent areas for action to accelerate process, progress in the seven remaining years to 2030. And as a member country, Nigeria was empirically assessed and analyzed its own progress. ZDR report of 2023 overall scores shows that the total progress towards the achievement of the 17 SDGs for all 193 member countries has reflected a very low score in the Nigeria scenario of 54.27 out of 100 and 146 out of 166 countries. This average scoring for our own dear Nigeria is a fair giving. It's fair, so to speak, my opinion anyway, given the complexities of our problems and these recent huge development needs and deficits. Nigeria government over the years have shown commitment to driving the localization and achievements of SDGs, which have been visibly indicated in the progression of our SDG index since 2015. But the country still presents with gaps and challenges towards the attainment of these goals. 
These are pictorial illustrations mimicking and depicting the score of 54.27. Of course, this performance profile has already been presented by the president of the African Leadership Group, Pastor Itwa. And it's very clear that the performance level needs to be improved upon. The International Spillover Index is also very clear about the need for the acceleration of the SDG agenda 2030 in Nigeria. And this is again a full justification for this webinar. And it's my belief that at the end of this conversation, we should be working out plans and platforms and strategies to improve on all these indices that we have shown that are not too favorable in the Nigerian context. I would just like to highlight some of the observed challenges that are affecting the acceleration. One of such challenge is the low foreign direct investment into Africa and into Nigeria. These have been debated and the obvious reasons are there. The climate, business climate, security, and a host of others. Debt management scheme of this country, of Nigeria, has actually consumed a lot of scarce capital resources that are required for these developmental programs. There's an urgent need for Nigeria to invest in building and strengthening the capacities of national statistics so that our, our stacks will be on point and apt to provide the required directive. There are some possible solutions that I'm advancing from my perspective and what is currently playing out in the attainment and acceleration performance in Nigeria. One of such is to redirect and reassess the policy, policy guided reassessment of the current state of SDG attainment in Nigeria. It is very, very apt and important that we do that. There's also a need to improve the status of our stakeholders' engagement. Collaboration and inclusivity are crucial for success. And Nigeria must em embrace a new mindset. The era of working in silos are over. We need to engage and embrace collaboration and partnerships in all sectors for acceleration of the performance index of this country to improve. There's also a need for smart goals and targets. Nigeria must define clear and measurable goals that will align with the desirable outcomes. These goals, of course, should be specific and not omnibus. They should be measurable, time-bound, realistic, and also achievable. As a nation, we must set targets related to reducing greenhouse emissions, and the rest of them. It is also important to invest in research and development. And this is where the triple helix is called into play. Research and development that will involve the government, the academia, and industries, where the principles of co-designing, co-delivery, and co-financing are called to play. Education and awareness is also a very potent avenue for advancing and accelerating performance of Nigeria SDG Agenda 2030. Sensitization and awareness will be key to driving the attainment of the SDGs. Nigeria must promote environmental education. It must be a curriculum-based uh, program to acquire the desired change. And the curriculum-based program will start all the way from the primary schools. And we should also have the community-based educational programs 
which will align within the context of the community. Collaboration and partnership, I've mentioned it, is one of the very key areas. Strong partnerships amongst organizations, governments, NGOs, and academic institutions must be, will be essential and must be included in the design and desire to attain the SDG goals agenda 2030. It is important again to leverage on our collective efforts to achieve greater impact. Collaboration can lead to shared knowledge, resources, innovative solution, and more, and more importantly, it is a pathway to advancing and accelerating performance of Nigeria's SDG agenda 2030. There is a need to constantly review and update the performance level, which is exactly what this webinar intends to achieve. Nigeria must constantly work to review and evaluate the effectiveness of a sustainable environmental and climate change action. These are all measurable targets crying for improvement. Implementation and monitoring is also a required platform for attainment. If you don't enforce, you don't, you don't enforce, you don't monitor, you don't evaluate, you cannot have actually the true picture of the level of implementation. So implementation, monitoring and evaluation must be called to play in scenarios of this nature. I have proposed some key stakeholders that are required for effective advancing and accelerating performance in Nigeria. They're already existing, but how powerful are the partnership? How interrelated? What is the nature of the interdisciplinary connect between these agencies or these stakeholders? The government entities, the academia and research institutions, the industries, community members, non-NGOs and the CSOs, business as industries, as I mentioned, the indigenous and marginalized communities, professional associations and industry groups, and media and communication channels. First of all, I would like to look at the briefly look at the impact and impact of the community members. Prof? Yes? yes? Prof? Yes? Yeah. Sorry, the limited time we now have. Okay. Okay. I will now. I will conclude uh, by presenting the contributions of the Center for Climate Change and SDG at Emilia University, which was set, set up to drive advancing and the acceleration of SDGs in Nigeria, and the operational platform is the Industry Government Academia Triple Helix, which is practiced in the university. The university has also worked with other stakeholders to ensure that aspects, particularly the environmental component, are achieved. The thematic areas of the centers include the smart, climate smart agriculture, renewable energy, waste to energy, the circular economy and climate financing. And several workshops have been conducted in this, in this regard by the Center in Circular Economy of Plastics in IU with um, Dr. Eugenie Tua as the driver of the project with the IU Center for Climate Change and SDG as a platform. The implementation of the circular economy and the university has been part of our interventions. The students' angle have been brought into and they are all players in this globe, in this fair. 
by, by the introduction of the Circular Economy Hub, which was also inaugurated at one of the outings. With this, I'll say, I will pause at this moment, expressing gratitude for your rapt attention. And I expect, and I hope other contributors will fill in the blank spaces and the gaps. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, our distinguished uh, professor, for that uh, brilliant uh, presentation. Uh, we will quickly move on and uh, allow the our distinguished panelists to speak, uh, bringing out their perspective regarding these uh, issues we're talking about today. The scorecard of Nigeria's performance, like many other countries, on SDG is not encouraging, based on recent reports. What are the UN's transformative initiatives to support Nigeria to advance the achievement of the SDGs. Mr. Matthias Shemale, you are the resident and humanitarian coordinator of the UN in Nigeria. Would you like to answer this question? and Give us your perspective on this. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. I hope you can hear me well. Um, Loud and clear. Okay, excellent. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, more than relevant uh, discussion and and webinar. Uh, look, if I, I if I had the answers, I would win some kind of Nobel Prize. So I'm really uh, just going to share some perspectives um, uh, and and allow me to make three points for consideration. The first one is that as I think already was highlighted by previous speakers, notably the, the professor, this cannot be about business as usual into the future. Uh, we cannot expect that if we continue what we've been doing so far, including as United Nations, we will have a different result by 2030, because despite all our collective efforts, the scorecard is not good enough. So what we have as UN team in Nigeria, there's 21 agencies working in Nigeria with a presence in Nigeria and a few others working uh, remotely. We have proposed to the government as part of our uh, sustainable development cooperation framework signed at the end of last year, a set of transformative initiatives to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. There's 13 in total, and we don't have enough time to go through all of them. Let me just highlight six that we believe are critical, that we intend to lead very much on as UN, but we will need government to, to, to be receptive to the support we're giving. The first one is getting as many young people as possible into decent employment and livelihood opportunities. I think that speaks for itself, as do the other five. The next one is transforming Nigeria's food systems. I have traveled uh, over these last 22 months of my presence here quite extensively through 16, 17 states. Nigeria can feed itself. I'm convinced of that. And if it, it, but it must transform as a country the way it deals with what we call in more generic terms food systems, including the access of small scale producers to markets and consumers. As an example, the investment into proper infrastructure linking rural areas with uh, urban ones. A third one is achieving universal health coverage. Again, you will not get young people uh, into decent employment if they are not healthy. You won't get anyone into decent employment if they're not healthy. And the same applies for the fourth one, quality learning through multiple pathways. You, you have already a highly educated labor force uh, and, and academia, etc. I've been most impressed every day at what Nigeria has to offer in terms of its people, what we often call human capital. But we also have to realize that 20 million children, according to UNICEF, are out of school. So obviously, quality learning opportunities for these 20 million children and quality education for everyone in school is, is a must. I next want to mention moving towards strengthened and more accountable governments. And allow me to come back to that in a little while. 
And then finally, uh, uh, as a sixth transformative initiative, overcoming the national state of emergency created by violence against women and girls. I think we probably all know that if women are not in equal measure at the tables of decision making uh, and influencing, the, this country will not achieve the SDG um, results that it desires. Now, let me secondly make the point. So first point is we, we are proposing and pushing government to pick a few uh, important areas where a transformative change is needed in an accelerated manner. Second point, and again, the prof has, has uh, touched on that, it is a multi-stakeholder cooperation that is needed. So obviously government plays a key role. And we see in the UN government's role in particular around creating an enabling environment, including an enabling environment for the private sector that we believe needs to be a key engine of development and growth. Um, so private sector, I've managed, I mentioned, they need to be part of accelerating SDG achievement. Thirdly, civil society. A big part of what civil society can do is to hold all of us, including in the United Nations, uh, to account for the lofty goals we give out and the way we go about achieving them. And then a final example, or let me give two more in terms of critical stakeholders that are needed to achieve the acceleration desired is academia. Again, others have spoken about this on this panel already, research and development looking towards policy advice. Government will need good policy advice to create the enabling environment. And it needs, government will need to be helped in translating policy into meaningful reality. I sometimes feel Nigeria has more than enough policies. What is needed is translating the many policies, good policies into action. And then finally, as a third point, allow me to touch, go back to the point of good governance that I mentioned as one of the six key transformative initiatives. I, I, I believe that uh, a big part of the challenge or part of the reason why Nigeria ranks only 144 out of 166 is around governance. And, and we all, I think, are hoping that we will see improved governance. It is critical. And allow me finally to mention two aspects of this. One is federalism. This is, as you all know better than I, a federal state. And I think it would be from the point of view of the United Nations a mistake to just look at the federal government. Governors have considerable power at state level, the 36 states and the FCT. And one area where I feel governors sometimes are at risk of too easily pointing to Abuja in terms of the federal government is looking at their own responsibility for education and health, as an example. The education and health, the transformation there will not be achieved if the government at federal level doesn't set the right policy and enabling environment, but it will also definitely not be achieved if, if the 36 governors and the FCT minister don't do their bit in ensuring that at their level, the right investments are made into schools, schooling, learning, and education. And then my final point is about domestic resource mobilization. I am uh, convinced with many others in the United Nations system that Nigeria, despite uh, some of the gross uh, indicators in terms of inequality and poverty, has sufficient resources to do it on its own. So a big part of better governance will have to be improving domestic resource mobilization and uh, hand in hand with resource mobilization, of course, investing into the right uh, things as and we see that discussion going on around the fuel subsidy being cancelled and of course the big discussion is what is happening to the savings of all that have resulted from that let me stop there to leave time for discussion thank you very much thank you very much mr matthias shamali the resident and humanitarian coordinator of the united nations in nigeria we certainly appreciate those your beautiful perspectives in ensuring a 
trans transformative and accelerated actions concerning what we're talking about. And indeed, you just talked about the uh, multi-stakeholder uh, roles that are needed to ensuring that all of this happen. And you have to own the subnational states. Indeed, just to repeat that one of the critical stakeholders in the SDG implementation are the subnationals. You have said that with emphasis. But how can we rate the SDGs uh, uh, performance at the subnational level? And what levers for transformative change or gap changes? An accelerated or acceleration of action can be adopted at the subnational level. I will move from you, Mr. Shamale, and I'll get, get somebody else to respond to this. She was the senior special advisor on special duties and SDGs in Ogo State. Ms. Damilola Otubanjo, what are your thoughts on these questions? Ms. Zamilola, can you hear me? Can you hear me? He's been online. I don't know what had happened. I'm online now. Oh, great. You are here. Thank you. I'm, I'm muted. Can you unmute me, please? Please, would you want to uh, unmute her? She's yeah. speaking. She's unmuted because She's you can hear her. She's unmuted. You can hear her. We can hear you, perhaps. Are you talking about your video? She would like to no, show her video. That. But I think it's allowed. You can also share your video, please. And okay. we can hear you anyway. Good evening, and it's a privilege being here this evening. Yeah, thank you for sharing your platform with me. And I do not take this for granted at all. I don't think my video is allowed to share. Maybe I need a bit of uh, admin to let me share my video. Yeah, but you can okay. share your video. I, the icon doesn't seem to be activated. Okay, I think I'm on now. Yeah, we can so, see you now. Thank you. When we look at the SDG performance at the subnational level, without a doubt, there is only so much the federal government can do. They are the parent body. Every of the work is crystallized down to the subnational, that's the state and the local government level. And it is clear that the bulk of the work lies with us, but beyond the bow and above that, which is entrusted on the shoulders of the state government and the local governments to do, it is also critical to understand that there are so many things that affect why the level of performance that we want to see has not crystallized or manifested so far. But as, an, as a representative of government, up until the cabinet was dissolved some months ago, I'm hoping that we get back on the job so we can continue from where we stop. Because when I assumed office as the SSD on special duties and SDG, we had a lot of gap that were identified, largely because prior to my appointment, there was no adequate focal person driving SDG. Now, SDG was seated under the Ministry of Budget and Planning for clear reasons, and it was one of the best places to put it. And that is because the government understands that mainstreaming SDGs into all relevant MDAs would allow for us to adequately tag all the goals to the relevant MDAs. So part of what they had to do that I met on ground, that I, I wasn't the one that did that, that I met on ground was to discover that all MDAs of governments, the ministries, departments, and agencies had been tagged with all the goals in order to say, okay, if we look at goal one, which is end poverty, it was linked to the Ogun State Multipurpose Credit Agency. I'm afraid I can only speak as regards my own state because that is the, the environment where I have a lot of information that I can clearly speak on. And it goes on to tag all those goals to the relevant ministries and the department of, of government. And it goes all the way down. All of that information I can share with them um, Dr. Eugene, after this, after this um, presentation. So we have done a lot as a state government up from the time I assumed office as the focal person 
I've been in connections with the uh, OSAP office, which is the office of the SSA to the president on SDG, and they were largely responsible for deploying various projects, particularly focusing on their three thematic areas, which was water, health, good ed um, um, quality education. So they had come into the state leveraging various stakeholders to deploy projects. Part of what I needed to then do was to see how do we ensure that many of the projects that were done in the state are relevant to the needs based on um, the influencers. When I say influencers, I mean the legislator, the political um, um, leverage to deploy projects, or are they deployed based on the need effect conducted locally, taking into account the local governments that we have in the state and how relevant are these projects to the relevant um, local government. So part of what I then had to do was to see that we develop projects that are fit for purpose. So part of what we're trying to do also is localizing the SDG. And in localizing the SDG, it is important to not just design solutions that are fit for us, but solutions that are appropriate and applicable to our own local clients. For example, part of what we're trying to do is to see how do we modify the set goals and targets on go three, for example, to our own local environment. So it is important for us then to be able to cascade it down to say that we would not just push projects that looks generic, but are actually specific to the needs of open states as a, as a, as a subnational, for example. So we have also gone ahead to see what is the vision, what is the goal, what is the objective of the state government? We have uh, our own developmental pillars that we call the SHARE, which is infrastructure, social and welfare, education, youth empowerment, and agriculture. So it was important then to say, how do we link SDG, which is a global agenda, with the state vision? Because if we're trying to push SDG, regardless of whether we are pushing SDG at a subnational level, every state, every government is already doing SDG. What is then missing is the tagging and the mapping. So we then have to go to see how do we synergize in order for the state not to be running a different structure separate from the SDG goals. I then use my own office to create and design our own thematic areas. And for me, I always say that goal number 17, which is partnership for the goals, should be a priority goal. It is on that basis that we're having this conversation in the first place. Partnership for me, partnership for the goals should be a priority agenda in terms of forging powerful relationship and alliances with relevant agencies of government, with relevant um, private sector, with relevant uh, NGOs and CSOs across the various strata. So for me, I then decide to give that a priority goal then in order to also find a, a symbiotic relationship between the state governments as, as a state in terms of cap uh, capturing our own, our own developmental pillars and also capturing SDG and also capturing what the federal government has focused on. We, have to, we also have to take the quality education as one of our thematic areas. And we then also have to see how do we improve on what the federal government is doing. A number of schools had already been deployed across the states in terms of new constructions, in terms of new buildings, part of what we then propose is, instead of putting new buildings in some part of the state, would it not be better that we guide the effort of the federal government to rehabilitate some of the schools that are falling apart as against putting up new structure? Is it not better that we advise that they give us um, the set up facilities in terms of labs, computer labs, um, chemistry and biology labs, rather than putting up new fittings where we do not even have enough personnel and teachers to run in some of these facilities. So we need to see how do we marry the effort of the federal government with the state government to drive and ensure that we bring it down and we ensure that we achieve optimum results in terms of the set target. So for us at Open State, <clears throat> which is one of the subnational, we have to give goal eight, which is decent work and economic growth, a significant engagement because for us, Open State has the highest number of higher institutions, which means we have the highest number of youth present within the state in this country, present in Ogun State. So when it comes to empowerment, capacity building, 
youth empowerment centers and transformational centers, it was something that we needed to give a serious consideration and effort. So that was part of what we focus on in driving our SDG at the, at the subnational level and also giving critical effort and, and attention to affordable and clean energy. A lot of rural, the rural areas have heavily domiciled in the state. We have significant urban areas, but more of rural areas. So it was important that for us to minimize rural urban migration, we need to make sure that the rural settlements are habitable for people to be happy to dwell in their immediate space without looking to jump out of their location in search of a better environment to dwell in. So without also leaving behind clean water and sanitation, which is also one of the projects that the federal governments are doing. There is no doubt that there's still a lot that has to go on in terms of what we need to do uh, at the work of national. Mr. Otuba, please. Yeah. Yeah, the time. Okay, Check. I'm going to go very quick. I thought I had 20 minutes, so I was checking my time. I had done eight minutes, but let me quickly touch on no, when we look at the affirmative change. A lot of what we're talking about here has already been discussed, other than the fact that I was discussing a peculiar situation as regards to Gun State. When we look at the transformative change that we can adopt to accelerate SDG at the subnational level, without a doubt, and without even thinking too much about it, the last speaker spoke on it, youth are a massive levers in terms of trans transformative stage. And I think I'm coordinating the diverse self-organized youth organizations. There are a lot of youth organizations that are doing so much as regards SDG that I believe we need to strengthen their, their pocket of activities by bringing them together under a body, through forums, through summits, in order to avoid cross-cutting issues and duplication of effort. But rather, how do we integrate every of this pocket of youth-led, youth-focused organizations that are doing different SDG and SDG-related projects? So for me, I believe we need to be able to leverage youth and they are a massive uh, um, um, leverage when it comes to how do we engage their hands, they understand the technology, they understand trends, they can, they, they are committed people, they have the capacity to go beyond just um, survival to push their own agenda. So for me, I believe we need to be able to bring them together under one umbrella and beyond that, provide you development centers that can further strengthen the resolutions that we bring up on some of this summit. Whenever we have done some of those summit and forums, we need to be able to have a big umbrella like a summit. Part of what I have proposed into a, a budget for this year is to put a different part of the state youth development center for capacity building, for trainings, for, for symposiums, for summits and, and all, all whatnot. So for me, I believe we need to be able to do that. Multi-stakeholders participation approach one that's already been addressed, and we cannot overemphasize the need for government, private sector, CSOs to collaborate and ensure that we all work together to drive, to drive SDG. And above that, I was of the opinion that one of the things we need to do is to set up a council or a committee that would be overseen and be like the watchdog of the set targets and the set objectives of the subnationals by including the academia, the government representative, the private sectors, the civil society organizations, the various NGOs and small pockets of youth led organizations to be able to say, okay, let's come together, let's bring representations that will drive this big agenda and then let's have measurable um, solutions that we can track based on what are the various activities that we're supposed to be doing that way, it won't just be that the state governments or the local government that are driving SDG, but we've been able to harmonize different pockets and different stakeholders to be part of the drivers of SDG. Financing SDG is one other area that we can leverage CSR for SDG. There are a lot of funding that corporate and, and private sectors have for their corporate social responsibility that we can make a demand on and make a request on and guide their deployment of such funds in line with SDG at the subnational level. Every state, every local government have their own plan, have their own agenda. Sometimes in working together with some of this private sector can go a long way to synergize and see how do we maximize the available funds 
or if we need to put in to, to, together a consolidated fund that can be overseen by the various stakeholders to ensure that the funds are adequately utilized and it is used for the right purpose. So for me, I believe we need to also be able to put that in place in terms of domestic resource mobility. Yeah. 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 Monitoring, reporting, and evaluation is not something that has been. We have a ranking of 163 out of 199. Maybe so perhaps we can take that in a round of questions. Okay. That will come up very shortly. Yes. Thank you. So that we can Thank quickly you. move on to the next part. I certainly appreciate your insights. And uh, one of the things we talked about uh, is funding, finance is needed. Absolutely. It's needed. Undoubtedly, we, we, we know it's needed. And so to, to speak on, in, in that uh, area, hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Thank you very much. So we know one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks to achieving the goals identified is the amount of money we need. For instance, it is estimated that we would need at least about 350 billion US dollars to achieve the goals. And this is about 800% more than the country's 2022 20, budgets. And 37%, about 37% of these budgets will be financed, perhaps by debts. My the critical question we would like to ask is: is it really possible to identify the challenges associated with? These resources, could we mobilize these resources? What are the game changer regarding mobilizing this fund? How can we unlock high impact investment to support initiatives and commitments? We have uh, Dr. Morisa Atoki, who is the CEO of African Business Coalition for Heads. ABC heads that will perhaps help us to understand some of these issues regarding funding, regarding investments, and how we can get the levers for transformative change. Please, Thank you so Maurice. much, uh, Dr. Itwa, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, co panelists, as well as uh, um, all of the uh, representatives um, of the organizers uh, of this uh, forum. Thank you for your question. Um, I do have a presentation and I hope that I can get um, uh, somewhere around uh, addressing, addressing. Can you see my presentation? I'm going to try to be as quick as possible, given that a lot of time has gone. Um, I need a response. Can anyone see my presentation? Presentation, please. Yes, we can. Um, Thank yes, we can. you. Yes. Uh, so just even talking about uh, mobilization of resources and how to unlock high impact investment, I thought to uh, remind ourselves, um, and I, uh, Prof, uh, when he gave the opening remarks, that uh, given a lot of foundation around uh, where we are as a nation, an overview of where we are as far as the SDGs are concerned, some of the challenges associated with the SDG resources, um, the SDG implementation plan, uh, for those of us who are not aware, it does exist. Um, so there's a plan up to 2030 about implementing the SDGs and key levers for transforming change, um, and as well as mobilizing and unlocking the high impact investments to support um, SDG initiatives. Uh, again, to remind ourselves uh, at a political structure where the Federal Republic, uh, where about 923,760 kilometers, sizing 32nd in the world, um, where popular, uh, our GDP is uh, USD 487, and our GDP growth is at 2.7 as we speak. Um, GDP per capita is uh, $5,900. Organization rates in Nigeria is 47.8. Uh, minimum wage is still $50 a month. That's equivalent. So this is a bit old now. I'm sure this is slashed by half. Uh, equivalent to 30,000 naira a month. Um, unemployment um, at the youth uh, level is 42.5 and January 33.3. Um, and we have an FDI net inflow of uh, USD 2.4 billion. 
Um, even though Prof uh, had you know, spoken to some elements of this, I think it's important to understand uh, what the current structure, especially our institutional mechanism is um, as a nation, as far as the SDGs are concerned. Um, at the national level, uh, we have the office of the vice president, um, that's uh, the past uh, government, the, who set up the OSSAP, that's the Office of Special, Senior Special uh, Advisor, Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, um, as well as uh, a presidential committee of about a nine-man team, if I recall, to advise and give strategic direction on the SDGs. Um, in the same 2017, when this presidential committee was inaugurated, the private sector advisory group, uh, donor and development partners forum, a civil society strategy group on SDGs were actually also inaugurated by the office of the vice president through the office of the USSAP um, to mobilize competencies, expertise, and additional resources to support the achievement of the sustainable development goals in Nigeria. All subnationals are also structured to have SDG offices. I'm happy that um, uh, Madam from Ogun State, um, who spoke before me, uh, did a full representation of, at subnational level. Just as she is, there are subnational uh, focal persons across state government um, who look after uh, Nigeria achieving the SDGs. And also, we have a structure um, of reporting at the high level political forum, um, voluntary national reporting uh, SDGs. As Prof mentioned, we first Nigeria reported in in July 2017 for the first time, and we've also had another uh, our 2020. The second one was 2020, and I'm aware that there was supposed to be one in 2023 this year, July, uh, but I, I couldn't confirm if we actually did that report. Again, let's remind ourselves of the projected GDP growth uh, between 2021 and 2025 is. We have 348.1 trillion investment requirement um, and slashed over 2025. I won't uh, deliver us with that. Uh, between 2016 and now, a couple of uh, structures have been implemented and integrated into uh, the OSSAP. And by the way, uh, I'm not holding brief for the OSSAP. Um, I'm here in my capacity as somebody who's worked uh, with the government, well, with the academia, with private sector, uh, with the CSO, with the United Nations, as far as the growth and acceleration uh, to the agenda 2030 is concerned. Um, so let's go to, I'll go to number three, which is 2020. There was the integration of the economic, social, and environment dimensions of the SDGs into Nigerian economic recovery and growth plan. Prof mentioned it between 2017 and 2020. I think it's important for us to always reference you know, that as um, when we're working and we're you know, considering um, the achievement of the SDGs. There was also the domestication and customization of Nigerian Nigeria's sustainable development goals policy simulation model in 2019. Uh, in 2020, November, there was a commencement of the design and implementation of the integrated national financing frameworks. And also in 2019, the process of independent evaluation of three priority SDGs, one, three, and four, uh, commenced. 2020, 2019, 2021, there was a realignment of the national statistical system with the SDGs. We recall in 2016, there was um, a partnership with the National Bureau of Statistics. This was repeated in 2021, just for the purpose of realigning and ensuring that data that the nation was able to capture was available to be able to um, track and monitor the growth according to the goals and, and, and the targets of the SDGs. And there's something called the ISDGs, which is a simulation model uh, that helps to, more many please, a, a homegrown analytical framework and policy simulation order for aligning national development strategies with the SDGs, uh, enabling ministries, departments, and agencies to channel resources towards SDG areas. Some of the activities that were recorded uh, by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President, uh, these are really interventions. Again, if, I'm not going to read through, but if we look at them, we'll, um, I want us to 
uh, get our mind into the size of this intervention. So that when we're comparing in terms of progress, we're able to articulate uh, for uh, amongst 166 nations. Uh, for me, the biggest challenge uh, really uh, stems from the lack of integration of the local government in this subnational agenda of the SDGs. I say that because, um, and this is, you know, me speaking from my perspective, there seems to be a lot of work. So we're talking about policies. Nigeria has the highest number of policies that any nation in Africa can ever think about, get towards development. Some of these policies are never implemented. So policies, yes, coherency of policies, yes, maybe. But in terms of implementation of policies, we're really lacking behind. If we dig out all of the policies that we have that are targeted towards development, especially pertaining to this, and as we know, the SDGs, I mean, it's, it's, it's a global language. A lot of our national plans already have integrated in them components of the sustainable development goals. So for me, um, the lack of this integration at the local level, which directly impacts on the grassroots seems to be missing. Again, it does seem that a lot of efforts that we're seeing at a subnational level, at a national level, is suboptimal to uh, the situation at hand. It does seem like, you know, we call state governments, Kaduna State, for instance, we are doing incredible things as far as the issues are concerned. Oh, good state, I mean, thank, thank, thank you. Thankfully, Madam expressed some of the works they're doing. Lagos State, I'm acquainted with them. We hear about all of these efforts, but we're still lagging behind as a nation. In fact, we're failing as a nation. So there must be something drastically wrong with scale. And so for me, it's the lack of the ability of all of the key strategic players of ensuring that we achieve the SDGs, um, the lack of ability to scale on some of the solutions that have already been decided as far as implementing the goals. I'm, I'm really trying to. Yes, uh, we, we mentioned shortfalls financing needs. And I recall that Dr. Ito wanted me to, uh, to talk about mobilization of resources. Uh, so again, resources inflow in Nigeria between 2020, 2002 and 2018 um, stems between uh, what amount now? 120 billion in 2018, 25% decrease of remittances in 2020. We have slowed down FDI and capital flight and rise in debt servicing, uh, uh, limiting fiscal space. Um, again, COVID-19 came in 2020, the price external environment, oil price demand, FDI, downward pressure on government, revenue and economic growth and so on and so forth. Now, when we consider um, Nigeria as the hub of Africa, and a very attractive environment to invest. What exactly are we saying? What are the investment opportunities? And where are the key levers for this transformative change? For me, what Nigeria stands as one of the most entrepreneurial, innovative, and ingenious economies. Um, growing middle-class population, the scale of opportunities, quality of talent, scale of ambition and aspiration of government across strata. So we're talking about uh, youth, we're talking about um, uh, non-use, and we're talking about, of course, uh, those who are considerably um, also really quite uh, elderly in, in the workforce. Um, there are abundant economic opportunities, abundant natural resources, uh, improving uh, business climate, generous investor protections, um, and so on and so forth. I mentioned the Nigerian Sustainable Development Goals Implementation Plan. Um, that was launched in June 2021 for the purpose of uh, providing a roadmap to fast track the implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria. Uh, by chronologically reviewing the past, examining the present and projecting the last 10 years of the SDG. Coincidentally, we're in the last 10 years and we're three years gone um, as far as the last 10 years to 2030 is concerned. Again, the implementation plan mirrors the thematic area of the National Development Plan and Nigeria Agenda uh, 2050. Now, I had mentioned about the key groups and the roles of the key groups uh, as far as the SDG goes. And one of the key groups, as Madam had mentioned earlier, is the private sector. The presidency inaugurated the private sector advisory group in 2017 through the office of the vice president. Now, this group operates by clusters. 
What it means is that organizations from different sectors across the Nigerian economy are clustered by virtue of their corporate social responsibility projects. So it's nothing new to them. It's things that, it's the things that they've decided um, by virtue of their business strategy that they would invest, you know, socially investing. Now, the reason why this structure exists is so that organizations can feel comfortable to make informed decisions about what area of impact they want you know, to mobilize uh, resources for. And it's working. It's working, but again, the challenges um, around you know, suspicions, around competition, still inhibits um, that level of collaboration that is required to scale. You remember that one person's $10,000 um, and 10 people's $10,000 will achieve more together when spent together to scale impact than them just doing individual projects. Again, what are the attractions to invest on the institutes in Nigeria? Our fiscal incentives are there, our duty waivers are there. Some of them have been rejected, some of them have been renewed to, to attract investors into the um, SDGs climb. Uh, if we look at the um, NIPC, the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, and the Federal Inland Revenue um, Compendium of Investment Incentives in Nigeria, we see where uh, the compilation of fiscal incentives in Nigerian taxes and GDP sector specific incentives are. Um, we see some of the review components just so that there can be a bit more visibility and friendliness in terms of. Um, attracting investment as a nation. Um, over the next three or four slides, what I tried to do was to give um, different level of investment. So I did sector level investment um, in the power sector, we did the manufacturing sector, uh, we did uh, sub-national level investment uh, at Ondo State and also uh, global, just for us to um, have a view of some of these investments and how they're skewed. So if we look at power, first and foremost, um, we see uh, energizing education phase four by the Rural Electrification Agency. Again, this was deliberate. It was um, targeted um, at aligning to the SDGs, particularly SDG one, SDG two, and SDG 14. Um, accordingly, the energy audits and pre-feasibility studies were also conducted. Why did they decide to invest um, on this project? Uh, the, aligning to the uh, pledge of the government of Nigeria to achieve a net zero uh, by 2060, several bills and regulations were the achieving increased renewables, penetration, and eventually a net zero um, have been passed by the National Assembly. Again, um, at national level, um, a lot of efforts are being made. Some of the investments include the Nigerian Green Bond, Energizing Education Phase 1 to 3 um, by the Rural Electrification Agency, Solar Power Niger, Energizing Economies Initiatives, and so on and so forth. But when we talk about scale, I mean, the question really is how much impact um, is this size of project? So we're talking about a project of 202 million US dollars. How much impact has this had um, at, in the nation, you know, as a whole? Again, considering the grasp, how much of all of these uh, interventions really impact on the, the majority of Nigerians, which we know uh, to be at the grassroots level? Again, we look at the manufacturing sector, a private sector player, Chickasen Group, um, decided also to, to do this investment. Yes, 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 I'm wrong. Um, yes, I'm wrong. Uh, Present an opportunity for the financial partner to invest in expansion of plant, purchase of new equipment to set up 40,000 tons per annum uh, plas uh, plastic recycling plant. Again, the liberates and targeted uh, towards the SDGs, connect with the SDG goals, to reduce poverty, uh, to ensure gender equality, um, and also SDG goals that are aligned to, to the environment. And the, the last one of, of this um, investment uh, is a sub-national level, which on those states did. It's called the Greenfield Project. It's on infrastructure, a two billion uh, size uh, uh, project. Um, they were seeking for strategy partners to invest in joint ventures, uh, 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 again, reemphasizing um, the need for funding uh, as far as um, implementing some of the aspects of this SDGs are concerned. At a global level, these are international partners that find their way into the country uh, <laughs> to invest on the SDGs. Most of these players are not local. Uh, where are our own local partners and what are we doing as a nation 
to ensure that we promote uh, local partners uh, in the implementation of the goals. Thank you for your kind attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Atuki. That was uh, a, a, an expose, I must say. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, our distinguished uh, participant, please kindly insert your comments, your questions on the chat box. We will harvest that very shortly and then uh, play it with the uh, 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 panelists. Uh, uh, one of the critical things that uh, must be seen to be done is to identify new and innovative mechanisms to improve the quality and speed of deployment of stakeholders' cooperation and monitor progress in an open and timely manner. These are key to achieving accelerated and impactful results. Young He Min, as the chief of the Sustainable Development Goal Monitoring Unit, uh, Session, Statistic Division at the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, UN DESA. This should be of interest to you. We would like to hear your perspective on this. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Itua. Uh, and uh, thank you for the organizer for inviting me. Uh, so for this presentation, uh, this seminar, I uh, would like to share with you uh, some of the key findings from the latest the, the, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals Report 2023. So just allow me to share my screen um, quickly. So can you see the, my presentation? You can now share, you want to share your screen? Yeah, it, you can, okay, let me just try again. Um, yeah, you can share, you're a co-host, so you can share. Okay. Um, Why she's trying to do that, please, if you have any question or comment, uh, put it in the chat box. We will pick them and... So can you see the, my screen now? Yes, we can see it. Okay. So the slide show mode, that will be beautiful. If yeah. you can okay. see it in that right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to this very important uh, webinar on advancing and accelerating uh, performance of Nigeria's SDGs. Uh, so I would like to share with you uh, some of the, the key insights from this annual uh, report, uh, review our effort and com commitment to achieve the 2030 agenda. This year's report is a special report of the Secretary General um, and focus on, on the, the current status uh, of the SDG performance and also uh, some of the key uh, recommendations from the Secretary General. So, at the halfway mark, um, uh, the trend and the data presented in the report uh, uh, gave us a wake up call. Uh, our shared promise uh, to work together to secure the rights and well being for all uh, on the healthy and the thriving planets is in peril. So, look at uh, the progress of uh, the about 140 targets that can be accessible at the global level. Um, only about 15% uh, are on track to be achieved by 2030. Close to half are moderately or severely uh, off track um, and over 30% or one third have either seen no movement or regressed below the 2015 baseline. And uh, so this is a really alarming uh, realities. So the world continue to grip with the linger uh, COVID effect. So currently one in three people worldwide struggle with moderate to severe food security. And this figure reflect 
uh, learning 391 million more people than um, in 2019. And there are 25 million children missed out uh, uh, their routine immunization in 2021, which is 60 million more than in 2019. The pandemic also caused the learning loss in four out of five of the countries studied. And also COVID uh, triggered uh, the largest increase in, in between country inequality in three decades. Um, we were also at uh, war with nature's. Um, there's millions of uh, species are in danger of, uh, of extinction. So red, the red in list index has deteriorated by about 11% since 90, 1993 um, with uh, 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 accelerating decline than each decade. So I think I missed one about uh, the climate change, which is uh, very important. And we are also uh, at a tipping point uh, closer to a, a climate uh, uh, climate. And uh, so the, uh, the world with, according to the current trend, uh, and the world will exceed the 1.5 degree by 2035 and facing um, a 2.5 degree warming by 2010, uh, 2100. And so we also noticed heat waste, drought, flooding, and wildfires have become far too frequent and affect millions of, uh, and billions of uh, people around the world. And we also, I, Notice the rate of sea level rising has doubled in the past decade. And war and uh, uh, conflicts are also inflicting a devastating toll on the SDG, SDGs. So the, as of uh, December 2022, over 108 million people uh, worldwide has been forced forcibly displaced from their home, which is 2.5 times the number a decade ago. And the, the conflict-related civilian deaths surged by 50% in 2022, um, fueled by the war in, in Ukraine. And of many developing countries and the world's poorest and most vulnerable uh, people are bearing this brunt. So my, out of the 30, 69 of the world poorest country, uh, 37 were in debt uh, distress or at high risk of debt distress. So, sorry. Um, so the, the world could face big misses across all the goals uh, by 2030 if the current trends continue. Um, so if the current trend continue by 2030, there's going to be 575 million people will still living in extremely in extreme poverty. And only one third of the country will have half uh, their national poverty lines. And 300 million students will lack basic numeracy or literacy skill. And 84 million children and youth will be still out of school. In terms of gender equality, uh, we're still about 300 years uh, away. Um, however, I don't want to sound all like a very pessimistic uh, progress in some area uh, illustrate the promising potential for future advancements. And between 2015 and 2021, 800 million people connect to the uh, electricity. And 146 countries have already met or on track to, met, to meet the under five mortality target. And the effective HIV treatments have cut the global uh, AIDS related deaths by 52% since 2010. This is a really significant achievement at the global level. In addition, um, 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 medium high and high technology industry and have uh, demonstrated robust gro uh, growth despite uh, the slowdown of all, all, all uh, economic growth at the global level. And 95% of the world population uh, has mobile broadband access and under two in three people use the internet. 
and uh, uh, I, I also uh, noticed uh, in the questions and, and from the other panelists that mentioned the importance of data uh, for uh, evidence uh, decision making. And so unleash the power of the data uh, to guide us on track to the success is very important. So at a global level, significant stride also made uh, in terms of data and monitoring. Um, and the data records in the SDG Global Database has increased tremendously from uh, only 330,000 re uh, data records in 2016 to currently 2.7 million data records. Um, so uh, we can and must turn things around. We're out of excuse, especially since this generation is equipped with the knowledge and the technology and resources unprecedented in history, but the clock is ticking. I will not go to detail, but in this report, uh, the Secretary General, uh, General outlined five urgent actions, which I um, included in the report. Um, these actions uh, are intended to inform the delivery of the a rescue plan for people and planet at the SDG summit in September. And, and uh, basically, uh, the Secretary General called the world leader to recommit of seven years of acceleration, sustain, and transform actions, and also uh, ask the government to uh, have concrete integrated policies, particularly target the most vulnerable population. And the government also should strengthen their national and uh, subnational capacity, accountability, and public institution to deliver uh, the acceleration and needed. And, and uh, also uh, at the global level, um, uh, there's a call for uh, investment and the deliver SDG stimulus of $500 billion per year between now and 2030. And the lastly, and the member states also urge to facilitate the continuous strength of the UN developing system and to and boost the capacity of multilateral system to tackle the, the challenges. And in the report, uh, we also mentioned like a three major breakthroughs and also 39 priority uh, actions. So I'm not going to go to detail. I, I will invite uh, uh, colleagues uh, to uh, uh, look, read the report and, and, uh, and review the uh, priority action policy that recommended by the Secretary General. So I'll, I'll, I'm conscious of the time, I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, brilliant uh, presentation, helping us to understand and emphasize the need for data as soon as so forth. And interestingly, I like that phrase that uh, we are at work with nature. So we need to change our habits. We need to do things differently. Thank you very much. Uh, without having to waste uh, so much time, ladies and gentlemen, recall we had actually said that rather than get people to speak, we uh, please insert your questions and comment in the chat box. A number of you have done this. But we have just two pieces that we uh, that are reactors to all that have been said. One of them has been at the forefront of the CSO world. We will just give her two minutes to react to all that have been said. Madam Yemisi Rasamkuti, please, we need your feedback on what has been said so far. Thank you. Um, uh, I, this, is, this has been a very high level engagement. Let me put it that way. We might as well have been at the UN. So thank you guys for organizing this. Um, I just want to uh, concretize some of the thrust of where we should be going. The, the, we have done a lot of work in the past, all of us, uh, and an NGO uh, where uh, Dr. Itwa is one of the trustees, has presented a manifesto to the UN. Uh, uh, it's with Dr. Smalley right now. So those are some of the things we can begin to uh, engage with in terms of going forward. 
I love what Mrs. Uh, Otubanjo said about uh, youth center uh, and learning and recreation and development of young people at the local level. I would want her to, to speak a little bit more about that, the modalities for that, because uh, my view is that it's the local government that is actually the challenge. The fact that we are not, uh, we have a program with Lagos uh, State at, uh, it called Lagos Island Connect, where the state government SDGs office, the private sector, international development partners, and the local government itself are working together to engage, uh, to tackle the SDGs and other economic and, and social issues at that level based on doing needs assessment, actually truly understanding what the needs are before you develop your project. And we can share some of what we've done with the group later on. But um, what I would like to, to, to finish with is uh, I think what is missing is citizens engagement, the modalities for citizens engagement. How can we get a legal framework like they have in Switzerland and elsewhere where before these policies are developed, before these uh, grand designs are made, there are opportunities for citizens within their wards, within their communities to express their needs, to, to present their, 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 uh, their, their demands and for that to be captured in what we design at the national levels. So uh, that I think will, will definitely address uh, the, the issue that was raised in terms of the ability to scale. You cannot scale if you have not engaged at the bottom level to truly understand how you can engage, who's engaging, how they're engaging. And uh, the last speaker talked about data. How do we aggregate all this data to give us a clear picture of what is missing, who's doing what, where, and uh, what steps we can uh, take to achieve what we've all really been trying to achieve so many years. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Usually I will call you Auntie Yemisi. Thank you so much for that uh, intervention. And I'll quickly, uh, I want to read out some of uh, the uh, comments and indeed questions that have been raised. They are there. They, we, we will respond to a few of them. And then those that we cannot respond to because of time, we will get our uh, panelists to give them responses and then we will share. Please. The first comment I would like to uh, mention here says that... Uh, my question or suggestion is, why don't we establish a purposeful SDG office that NYC members for the next five years for the implementation of the strategies? There will be a coordination of all elements through visioning, raising awareness, community involvement, understanding, implementation, monitoring, evaluating, and reporting. And this question is asked by Dr. Abiola Tiligado, who is the chairman of uh, uh, Natural Eco Capital, my organization, as well as uh, family. Okay, let me just leave it there. And then uh, I would like uh, Ms. Otun Otubajo to give response to this. Please just take note of it. I will. Just take note of it. I will read out some of the questions and then let's just take note of it. And then one closely tied to that again has to do with the youth. Thank you for reporting on your specific project for the youth. Has the Google State implemented its youth development strategy at local government level? Are there plans to scale up the intervention? What are the plans for ensuring its sustainability? And then Please take note of that as well. I think it's related to the very first uh, question regarding NYC. Then there is this question from Juliet Chinaye, who says, these SDGs are targeted at ending poverty, protecting the planet and ensuring prosperity for all humans by 2030. Please, how achievable is this? Perhaps uh, based on statistics, your 
Hungry, maybe you want to respond to that? That might be uh, uh, what will if you give your perspective. And then there is another question. All the good policies that we have in this country, why is the implementation the barrier? Mr. Uh, Matthias Shamali, you might want to, from your vantage position, give a response to this on our behalf. Let me just quickly read out the remaining one, and then we'll, we'll just sign it, and then please. Then for Dr. Atoki, it says, uh, your presentation is uh, in localizing NDG. Of course, it's good. Uh, be that as it may, I have the following questions. It is apparent that the key targets and the UN SDGs themselves do not reflect the realities of mineral-rich Africa countries, which also constitute a significant portion of low and medium income countries. Have the organizers, presenters consider that the SDGs may need to incorporate the peculiarities from these countries? The second question, African countries through the African Union have the agenda 2060. Have these goals be considered in the discourse of supposed achievements of the SDGs? And then the last question for you. The UN, uh, the SDG themselves have goals of partnership and justice. Specifically, goals 7, 16 and 70 seek to recognize partnership, peace, justice, and strong institutions. Do the presenters and panelists suppose that African countries would achieve SDGs without recognizing existing African goals and continent aspiration? It, in the event that uh, you didn't get the question that I had raised, please call my attention to it. Please, in just a uh, very, uh, uh, we have less than eight minutes. And uh, for us to have our president draw the conclusion against this uh, uh, meeting, please just give your one, one minute on, on that. You can give us your further perspective. We'll share with the audience here. Please. Otumba and Joy, you want to give just a minute perspective and then your last word. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Toijin. I'm going to say very quickly that as regards the state government in terms of our implementation of the youth development strategy, we have taken significant efforts to ensuring that we've budgeted for it in this 2023 budget. But because the election cycle has just been concluded and still a lot of activity going on as regards cabinet being put up and all of that. So I cannot emphatically say that we are on the way towards implementation, but I'm very optimistic that as soon as the government has set up its cabinet, it will make it easier for us to then roll out on all uh, mapped projects. And that's how we can ensure that we even kick off. And definitely one thing that is at the heart of it is sustainability. You touched on that very quickly. It is not just enough for us to capture projects. It is not just enough for us to um, implement it, but actually ensuring the sustainability of it is where the heart of the matter lies. And we are definitely working on how we can work together with all other relevant agencies of government to ensure that whatever we build is beyond this current administration. Because a number of times, the reason why some of these projects do not have longevity is because it does not exceed the government thank, that thank you very much. So thank you very much. We still seek your opinion. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I can put forward. I'll, I'll thank just talk you now. very much. Uh, young Yimi, you want to how realistic we have less than 10 years, isn't it? So now that the midpoint is here, and then we're going back or going for the uh, 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 the, the, the summit. Do you think with the summit to achieve all this? How realistic? In one Hi. minute, please. Yeah. Thank, thanks for the question, sir. I'll just try to say, um, in the summit, I really think if the, the government and all the stakeholders uh, and recommit uh, to the, the next, in the next seven years um, and uh, for the SDGs advancement, uh, there's a possibility we still can achieve uh, uh, most of the uh, target and goals. Um, th there's a, a lot of good lessons learned, and uh, we, we implement and have the sufficient uh, uh, policy and also investment. Uh, I think this is still possible. Uh, 
Nigerian leadership series. Right. And then we were looking at the issues of policy. Mr. Shomali, you would you want to say anything on that? Very brief, so that we have our president, uh, and then uh, we have uh, Dr. Atuki. In just for one minute, please. Okay, Dr. Atuki, you want to say something? I don't know whether Mr. Shomali is still here with us. Yeah, I, I think there was something wrong with his network because I, I heard him a bit, but maybe just really quickly, and I most really appreciate um, Mr. or Mrs. Oluyinka Uyeniji for uh, for those questions. Yes, uh, I want to first and foremost agree with you. Um, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals were not carved after the specificity of the realities of, of um, African nations. Yes, and but that's fair enough. So, so also it wasn't carved out uh, the realities of, of Asian, Asian nations, Latin American nations, and so on and so forth. But we have the opportunity and we're given the right to be able to, do, and that's what domestication of the SDGs are you know, all about and localizing it. We need to make it ours. And that's our responsibility. It's not the responsibility of the United Nations. Um, so we don't go verbatim about you know, the targets and the indicators and the goals. We look at how we get them, we customize them um, for our development as nations in Africa. And I think that will work. I mean, for what the National Bureau of Statistics has helped us to do, for instance, is to be able to align existing data um, with the United Nations goals and targets and indicators. And that by itself is local. So we can go there and begin to examine uh, to be able to form what available data we have as far as tracking the SDGs are concerned. I'll leave it there because of time. Over. Thank you very much for leaving it there. We certainly appreciate <laughs> your 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 those words that you just uttered. Uh, uh, our great audience, thank you so much for being here. And uh, so much has been said, you know. We know some of you, uh, you have your comments here. We will look at them and see how they form part of the pack that we will be dealing with. The, our president, African Leadership Group, we have a, uh, our distinguished panelists, the audience, and then our keynote speaker. They've said so many things. Perhaps you have some words, a closing remark on what is next for all of us. I would like to call on Pastor Itwa Igodalo. Thank you very much, Dr. Itwa, for um, so masterfully moderating this session. Um, you know, I got a bit worried because every time they call Dr. Itwa, I thought they were calling me, but uh, here we are uh, at this point in time. So maybe I'll try and be a doctor so that I can um, bear that name properly. I want to thank everyone. It's been a very, very rewarding and refreshing uh, session, really. Um, and I have personally learned so much about this issue of SDG and exactly where the world is. And everyone seems to have brought uh, a different kind of perspective to where we are and what we're doing. So let me thank um, our keynote address uh, presenter, Professor Lawrence Ezemoye. Let us also thank my good friend, Mr. Matthias Shimali. Uh, he's been on our program before. Oh, and I think we've met together in my office. Ms. Damilola Otubanjo, the, uh, the Oga of Ogun State. It was good to hear that perspective as to what you met on the ground and what my brother, Dako Abiodun, is trying to do in Ogun State and his passion about it. One person we should have actually had on this forum, and I don't know if we could have grabbed her, is uh, the coordinator of the SDGs for the federal uh, Her Excellency Mrs. Adefulere, okay, um, former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Oriloku Adefulere, who really is driving this process at the federal level. Maybe at the next time we gather, she will be able to avail us of her presence and to tell us what she has experienced at the at the federal level. Uh, let me also thank Dr. Atoki. Thank you so much for that insight into uh, domestication and customization and the Greenfield project that you mentioned, 
and re-emphasizing the need for funding uh, and uh, the absence of local funding and the the issue that most of our funders have been have been have been international funders. Okay, I was really really taken in by Young Yi Min. Uh, I don't know if she's Miss or Mrs. But uh, that report of the key findings on uh, 2023 was very very well. I like the fact that you try to tell us it's not it's not all bad news and that some places have been improvement, especially in HIV and uh, things like that, you know, but what I saw was something uh, frightening to say that it is unlikely that we're going to meet those goals and 37 out of 69 countries are in debt and um, th uh, about 37% of, of our SDGs, there's been absolutely no movement. Yeah, well, it's I either that we have not that. taken it seriously or That's there's something wrong somewhere. Yeah, it but all I know, all I know from yeah. both a pastoral from government interest also, and a spiritual perspective They don't want to make 12 trillion. That means for them to be able to do their business. Can we All I know from both a pastoral, spiritual, and ethical, and also economic perspective is that the reason why we are at this stage, quite frankly, is the selfishness and greediness of men. You know, all over the world, there's more than enough resource, more than enough resource to make sure that every single SDG goal, all the 17 of them, can easily be met. Food sustainability, absence of poverty, education, uh, cleaner, <laughs> cleaner environment, good governance, peace and stability, economic development, more than enough, more than enough. Uh, the, the irony is that Africa, that they call the poor continent, actually has more than enough resource within its bowels to make sure that it's an economically viable place. What is happening is the distortion that we find in terms of the first world and the third world and so on and so forth. And if only we could find a way of redistributing resources, uh, if the UN could champion that course and actually compel a lot of countries to redistribute their resources, we will be able to fast track our SDG goals. You know, in the same vein where a lot of countries are destroying harvest, destroying crops, destroying produce, not harvesting enough minerals out of the ground, controlling and restricting oil production and so on and so forth. Uh, it's the same world where some people are starving and they cannot have anything to eat. The same world where you have excess capacity in terms of schools and teachers and learning aid and material. It's the same world where lots of children are not going to school. And it's simply because there's a misdistribution of resources because of the greed and insincerity of men, especially our leaders. So the first thing I think we need to do if we're going to achieve SDG is to transform the mind and change the mind of the average leadership uh, in every country to get the countries that are rich to be much more interested in supporting the poor. Everything might, should not just necessarily be about their own interest and their own making money. There should be a way by which you all generally want to love, uh, make the world a better place. And that's what the scripture talks about, loving your neighbor as yourself. I just came back from England a few uh, last week. And in Nigeria here, the irony is that most people started asking me if I brought them back chocolates. Did I bring chocolates? Did I bring chocolates? And I turned to Olu and I said, isn't this ironic that people are expecting that you bring chocolates back from England when there is not one cocoa tree in England? Most of the cocoa that becomes chocolate is actually grown in Ghana, in Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and Brazil. Yet, yet people think and uh, assume that chocolates uh, uh, origins or originated from Europe. 
this is the this is, these are the um, fallacies of economic development in the world where uh, we, things have been totally distorted and we have not told ourselves the truth and try to help one another to develop together where there's space for everyone under the sun. There's no child that should be without education. There's no child that should be without basic health care. There's no child that should be without hope, opportunity, and economic development. And from where I stand, I think some three or four critical things are very, very, very important. Sincerity of purpose and honesty of leadership with a determination to ensure that they do right by their people. Number two, um, fairness and equity in terms of nations dealing with one another and nations not trying to oppress and take advantage of others. And Africa, they've taken advantage of Africa for many, many years, and that needs to be distressed, uh, 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 rearranged. You know, people have been taking on Mr. Macron and the French for what they did to Francophone West Africa. And of course, what happened in Congo uh, with the Belgians. So that, again, is a source of challenge and has turned uh, Africa into a place of difficulty. Number three is that there should be much more equitable international trade packs and agreements that make it better for the nations that seem to be poorer to harvest more of their resources and get uh, more balance of trade payments uh, so that they can develop their own economies in the hope that their leaders will use the money uh, judiciously. Number four, there must be zero tolerance for corruption because part of what has led to where a lot of countries are today is because they've had leadership that has been highly corrupt and has not properly allocated uh, their resources. And number five, there must be an end to the drug cartel. There must be an end to the drug cartel. You know, one of the causes of poverty and degradation is an international cartel of drug dealers that are making a lot of money and um, it's like the opium war that you had in China many, many years ago. And they are deliberately causing poverty by institutionalizing uh, drug dealing and making sure that once a man's mind is distorted, he's unable to empower himself. I think if the world came together and sat around the table and they were honest and sincere and said, we need to readdress these things and we need to be fair to one another, it could really, really fast track our SDG goals and make something great out of this next seven years. Let me thank everybody and all the useful comments, my sister, Ms. Rasam Kuti, and of course, all the other commentators. Thank you so much for being part of this. Let me thank again the EEE group led by Dr. Itwa uh, and all the other members of that group. A phenomenal job. Our partners, Unique, thank you so much for partnering with us and every single person on this platform, I want to thank you. And of course, the ALG management team, you've done a great job. God bless us all. Let's enjoy the rest of our week, and the rest of our weekend. And then by God's grace, we'll be back on Thursday next week with yet another array of discourse over setting our Africa free. Thank you. God bless you.